Lowest lane, number 11, Greg rucker with Mike Perkins on the arc. This is, what, Connor's second book of the week? <laughs> third. Oh, third, sorry. <laughs> Three whole books. There you go. Uh, uh, Rucka's gonna do what Rucka's gonna do, and low-key, this feels like a sequel to all of his works at DC. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah See, I, I feel like I missed a lot in this issue by not having read yeah, of his previous stuff. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know who this character that uh, Kiss of Death turns out to be is, but from context, it still had enough weight from context where, because everything with Lois saying, put on the mask so she sees who you are, put, you know, mm -hmm. put on the mask, you know, as, as, cause, cause Renee gets shot at the end of the list, so she's dying there and Midnight's kind of fighting off Kiss of Death, like one on one. And Lois is on the phone and she's like panicking because she's, you know, she blames herself for getting Renee shot. She's like, no, put on the mask. And Renee's like, oh, what the hell? Why not? I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put on the mask. And it's basically this thing that triggers the memories in Kiss of Death so that Kiss of Death wants to help and ultimately yeah. uses her life energy to like sort of bring Renee back or, or stop her from dying, which actually cures her and gives her, or, or, I mean, she already has memories, but kind of like cures her from the, the skin. yeah, the skin thing that she had. <laughs> uh, she's not just a skeleton anymore yeah so she's back so we actually end this with like almost like a i mean this is actually kind of turned into like the best birds of prey book that, we, that we've had in a while because it kind of right it feels like a birds of prey team at the end almost yeah so this we'll like this started with rucka using lois to take a stand on journalism mm -hmm. and now it's become a treaty or a treatise on the multiverse in its current state in the dcu so um I'm assuming, Matt, you know who this uh, Sanchez is better than me and Pete. No, so <laughs> I do... Oh. oh, okay. I am familiar with the religion of crime, so as soon as they said she's a nun in the religion of crime, that was something that I remember reading. It, it ran through his Batwoman run um, with, with Kate Kane mm. uh, and Alice, her sister, and then it, it was in uh, Final Crisis Revelations where you had the Mark of Cain and it taking over Vandal Savage, and there was this whole thing with the Spectre. Um, but I remember that being a, a big thing through Rucka's run. Yeah. So I'm, I, I don't know about Pete, but for me, a lot of Rucka's DC, classic DC stuff mm -hmm. is kind of a blind spot for me. No, I, I'm, go back. I'm familiar with a lot of the overall beats, but I haven't necessarily read much of it. Yeah, it kind of is for me too. It's obviously something I want to go back and read. Uh, so much of it feels like ingrained in the time, though, that I kind of want to do it while I'm reading other stuff around it as well to sort of fit it into yeah, the, the puzzle. It, it feel, it, it, all that stuff from like, you know, kind of Infinite Crisis onwards. Yeah. It kind of feels in that period where it, you kind of need yeah. to be really yeah. fully invested like, in everything. So don't get me wrong, one day on previously we'll, we'll try to give like two slots to just this is the, the Infinite Crisis era of books and we'll, we'll you know, plow through that, that a lot of the fun, yeah. related material, but. So I just found something that I have not read that somehow missed me in the 52 Aftermath, <gasps> um, which was the Crime Bible, Five Lessons of Blood, which was by Rucka. Maybe that's where this character comes from. I did not realize um, Matt was such a fake DC fan. That's just shocking to me. A uh, big fake. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just, I feel bad because Matt being our resident continuity wonk. Yeah. I assumed he knew who this character was and I kind of no. just put that out there like, oh, I'm sure Matt knows. Yeah, it was, like, no, it wasn't know. like the sister where I could, you know, quick Google and, and you know, sister was sure. at mercy. Not mercy here's, but... a, here's, here's a point I want to make about this though, is I feel like this, this issue to me proves, given the fact that not, none of us, not one of us knew exactly who this character is, but as soon as Lois said put on the mask, I got why she was doing it. I got that she was trying to mm. get her to remember Renee from this previous timeline. And I think this proves to me that even when you don't know the, the history that, that a comic is pulling from, or any story for that matter, if the story is well told enough, the context alone is enough to give it meaning in the moment. Even yep. if it's, It may not be as strong as someone who actually read that old stuff, for, but it still worked. I don't think this didn't work for any of us. No, I agree. I think it's very clear immediately that this, of, of what it's doing, I think the story has established what it was doing well enough that I understood immediately, okay, this is what we're doing. Yeah. I feel the actual character's return didn't mm. have the weight that it should have done because I haven't read that. And I did feel myself kind of aware that I wasn't getting the full weight, uh, the full impact. Um, but it was still very well told enough that I understood what was going on. I just didn't get all of the emotion that I feel like I should have done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta go find this book because that's, uh -huh. that's where that came from. Because <laughs> it's about the faceless one, so that that was all there. There you go. Um, uh, so 
yeah, when, once I had seen that there's the religion of crime stuff, I started to make the, the gaps of it and that clearly they know each other from a multiverse thing, which we already got with Jessica Midnight, right? Yeah, it was, it was all somehow this... she was also a witch, but she was also part of Checkmate. And so now Renee was a, you know, has she always been the question here? It, it's, it's more pre Flashpoint stuff kind of like coming back. And it does beg through. The, it begs this question of how many characters could be triggered? Like, could their memories trigger if shown the right thing? And, um, and, and knowing how closely Rucka and Bendis, right? I'm wondering if this is going to bleed into Young Justice mm. with, with them. With, that makes with some how sense. No one, no one remembers Connor or or Bart and Cassie, and how well, I mean, it literally just happened in Action Comics with Connor and the, the Kents. That's right. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. But but then we also have how how do Spoiler and and Drake fit into this? So, right. So just on a on this particular character, I just googled yeah. you know mm-hmm. the, the name Alicia Sanchez. Right. So she's a a real comedian who looks okay. nothing like this character, which is is a different thing. But basically. The comedian uh, actually wrote to Greg Rucker, or you know, was uh, knew Greg Rucker, oh. and and, spo- and Greg Rucker wrote them into an issue of uh, DC's Crime Bible, in which they are a sex worker that falls in love with Renee. Boom. God damn, uh, Rucker. So that's where this character comes from. Uh, Interesting. Uh, Do you know what? Now this, you're saying it's, now... it's a very minor beat by the sound. Uh, pretty yeah. important in that issue, yeah. but minor in the context of DC history. Well, because as far as I knew, Renee's most most, I mean, was was she with Maggie, or is that just Kate? Kate's with Maggie. Yeah. Right? And then, but Kate and well, Renee. Kate, now Kate's been with Matoya as well. She's been with her, but I, I assumed right. Matt meant right now. Oh, right now. I don't. Well, I don't know about right, right. now. I mean, I mean, there was Renee stuff in the Batwoman book where she was like, they were sort of like, you know, they had that kind right. of relationship. They had of, like, the history. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I I hadn't, I wasn't aware of any of Renee's other relationships. Uh, yeah, I just want so. to say there's a couple of nice moments here that I really like. I love the moment where Renee comes out after she's better and she just goes straight up and kisses her, uh, and then yep. the, the the nuns like awkwardness, <laughs> like you know, w- watching this. Yeah, uh, was kind of nice. But no, I I love that that final panel that you know, the final page as a whole really, but where it's like Lois like rallying the troops and it's you've got a nun Jessica Midnight Renee Montoya who still looks like Michelle Rodriguez by the way. And right. this, uh, you know, artist formerly known as the Kiss of Death, <laughs> all just lined up, like ready to take on. Um, I don't know. I just I thought this was a. It was kind of. Yeah. I, I felt like this issue kind of like brought a lot of elements together of what they've been doing with like remembering multiverse stuff and mm-hmm. like building yeah. the team and all that. So it, it kind of feels like it's really set up its final issue now, which is cool. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and th- and thus far the only Rucka character that I'm really missing is is, is Sasha Bordeaux. Yeah. Be- see, I mean, so see if Rucka one or two left here, Matt. Yeah. Right, if Rucka is willing to do a sequel to this, whether it's just another Lois Lane book or that it kind of spins out of this into either this right, team question. or question or whatever, yeah. you know, whoever he wants to like focus on as the main character, like if this leads to another Rucka like twelve issue series, I am all for yeah. it. Because his his Wonder Woman, his and and then this. They're both distinct, and they're both kind of follow-ups to what he was doing in DC mm-hmm. before he left to go just do, you know, creator own stuff. So I feel like he's getting to scratch that itch, because I feel like this is someone that really cares about this section of the DC universe. Like, he spent a lot of time building it, and then for him just to to walk away from it yeah, uh... because of, you know, whatever happened post-52 and whatever and final crisis yeah and the art's yeah. really good uh, i i you know perkins has been perkins. you know has his moments of like falters but i mean typically uh, is up to a really good par mm-hmm. um you know if we if we essentially if we do get another one of these like an l12 issue book whether it's you know again lois lane 2 or something else i do kind of like the idea that there's essentially an ongoing rucka book it just keeps changing every 12 issues to like whatever yeah. he wants to write next <laughs> like i'll take I'm, that i'm okay with that i'm definitely okay with that whatever he's passionate just... about yeah, but when once I I saw her start talking about the crime, I went, "Oh man, he's pulling all of his threads together here, mm-hmm. just just with one issue left." And it, it definitely, I'm like, what? No, "I want more." If I have, I can a, leave me hanging at twelve. And a broader spectrum. If I if I have a uh, if a not a complaint, but like a fear uh, of of this stuff, and then obviously what's going on in action with you know Connor and the Kents mm-hmm. is that this is happening earlier than I'd expect. If like Metal's going to fix a lot of things. 
that we may get all these memories back and then Metal's going to ruin it by <laughs> taking them all away again. Uh, and see, that's why I feel like it's more like a zero hour where you we'll may, touch uh, on certain things. You're probably right. Not, you're probably not right, and I hope you're right. But I just, there's a slight fear. There's just a little I mean, worry. I think, I think it's worth remembering uh, that in, a, in, um, in another time, in another world, we would be continue. We would have already started the generation one shots by now. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I don't think necessarily that that um, that metal is going to undo these things that you're worried about undoing. I think it's more just uh, because it had to course correct and fill in these things that generations was going to be doing. No, I get. Was, I, like, I, I get what you're later than expected. I get what you're saying. The stuff that's happening in this in action was maybe stuff that tied in more to what generations was going to should have in theory been doing right about now already. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, that may be that may be true. Uh, also, I, I don't I, I'm not pointing this out to be mean, but I, I've been generally confused for the past ten minutes whether that Connor's got a pimple on the top of his nose or if there's something on my screen. And... Oh no, I, I've got uh, a cut <laughs> so on my scratched. nose. It's a cut. It's a yeah. cut. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, oh, so it's on you. Okay. I mean, I, I thought it was because it, it was moving with you, but like there was a while you were staying still enough. I'm like, is yeah, that yeah, on my screen? A cut right there, and it's really irritating. It's been there for about. I'm surprised it's been there for about two, three weeks because I keep forgetting it's there. And just scratching it and ripping it open again every like every two <laughs> oh. days, and it's really irritating. Just don't touch your face, especially right now. I mean, and... I'm inside for days at a time. It doesn't to touch my face. I'm not worried about spreading anything. It's just me, so I just I, I don't think about it. Yeah, I go, oh, but and it's you know face. how you won't scratch. scratch. You know how you won't scratch that if you don't touch your face. But I don't have a, a need to not touch my face for most of the time. Yeah, right? scratching that thing open. Well, yeah, I know, but I don't, I don't okay. have the self restraint to be aware of that all the time. All right, let's get to reads here. Right, let's, let's get, get to reads. Uh, Matt, what are you giving it? I'm gonna give it an 8.5. I really enjoyed this. Shocking, yeah, right? yeah, no, that's, that's fair, uh, Connor. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight. I also very much enjoyed it. It's it's excellent. Uh, it's held back by I was aware of the fact that I didn't know entirely mm -hmm. what it was doing, and that kind of took me out of the moment a little bit. Yeah, um, I know I liked it a lot. I love the discussion. So I'm gonna say with Matt on this one, I haven't been some either between you guys or, or in the middle between you, like all all episode here. But I'll go with eight point five as well. Uh, really solid stuff.